Because I'll bet everybody in here has put up a dice hole, right? No. Is everybody? Oh, okay, good. Great. Never done. Good. Great. Never done. Especially to hear. I wanted to hear. Hey. Doesn't mean those of us who've done it know how to do it. I mean, uh, about all I can claim so far is a folded dipole for uh, uh, FM radio. FM radio, there you go. Okay, well, first off, I'm Ron Payne, WA6YOU, and uh, I get to teach this for Raytheon Corporation, but I'm going to do it for you guys for free. So this is uh, um, This will be the basic part, the first 25 minutes today, and we'll take questions. We'll do basics, and then when we get over to the cafeteria, we'll get into the reactants and impedance and the electronics behind the dipole. <coughs> so, and the antenna here is a dipole. What is a dipole? You'd be surprised how many people. Well, it's a wire up in the tree. And I don't know really what it is. First off, it's called a doublet or a half-wave Hertzian. Heiner's Hertz came up with it, 1883. 1883, and guys, when you put up a dipole, you're using the same formula Marconi used. I mean, this is pretty cool stuff. Physics never changes. Basic building block for all other antennas. All other antennas have a dipole in it somewhere. Okay? Very simple, easy to calculate, a simple formula that you don't even have to look up. It's one that I've remembered for 53 years. <coughs> Cost effective. And guys, one thing, of all of the neat stuff we have in our ham shack, this might be the only, this might be the only homebrew piece that you have in your whole station, is your antenna. These days, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got like 35 receivers. I've got six transceivers. Homebrew. I can't think of one thing I built. Not anymore. Maybe Heath kits when I was a kid, but today, no. The only thing that's homebrew at my house is my half-wave dipole. That's it. It is the leader of all antennas in performance versus simplicity. Okay. Excels in efficiency. It can be up to 98% efficient. Easy to match. Common feed lines that we all use. RG58. LMR240, which you people know better as RG8X. <coughs> RG213, which is our mil spec version of RG8. And the Cadillac or Ferrari 9913F7, which some of you know as LMR400. <clears throat> All of these are 50 ohm. The center of a half wave dipole is very close to 50 ohms. Direct feed. So very easy to match. And they're close to 75 ohms? You could match it with 75 too. Yeah, sure. but I mean, if it's in reality, closer to 75 or 50. Not really. 50 to 75. Depends how high off the ground it is and what's right, next yeah. to it. Right. Okay? Most of the, the math the is answer, to 75. Yeah, most of the math that you do is in free space. Right. But we live in Fairfax and Vienna and Herndon where it's mostly 50. Right. My antenna is exactly 53 ohms at my house. Why? At 7.16 ohms. Why? It just happens to be the height versus the ground and everything. Okay? Relatively easy to mount at a convenient height, and you know if you don't have you know, if you don't have trees, you got HOAs. I go out to Bull Run Park with my students, and I put the antenna up <coughs> five feet off the ground, and we have a ball five feet off. I've even put the antenna six inches off the ground. I put it on the ground. We have a good time. You can do you know just about anything with the dipole. Poles, trees, buildings, I've done all of them, okay? And they're a lot of fun to build, tune, and operate. I've got quite a few examples up here that we'll pass around during the, uh, the other session. 
or we might even have time to do that here. Everybody recognize that? <coughs> the actual equation is 492 over freaking megahertz, but that is in free space. We have to deal with our wire. We make it from a, a wire or a pole. And we have to deal with the end insulators, which add capacitors. Mm -hmm. So 468. And now the good news. 468. I have never in 52 years had to make it longer. This always makes it longer automatically. I have always had to cut my dipole on the ends, no matter what I've done. 10%. 5 to 10% it seems. So that's why I like this formula. I never have to splice on wire to make it. I want 7160. Well, speaking of 7160, let's do 7150. So if you add a calculator, 65 feet, which turns out to be 32 feet, 8 inches per side. And we call each one of these legs, by the way. We call it the wavelength leg. Put it in any configuration you want. Any questions so far? All right. So here's a balanced dipole. Notice I put the word theoretical, where we have I1 and I2 doing all of our radiation for us, and you never find one that's perfect, 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 but we get so perfect. You know, we're just ham operators. We can do it darn near perfect. <laughs> so this is a balanced antenna. A dipole is a balanced antenna, and we're feeding it, for most of us, I know I am, I'm feeding it with unbalanced coax. Now, does anybody in here feed it with twin light? Okay, a few of you do. I use coax, and I use 50 ohm coax, and I use a balance, which we'll talk about in the other session. Um, you'll never have anything as perfect as this. There will be current imbalances due to things in your yard, wet grass. I mean, I look at my yard. I've got the trees. I've got under my antenna is a chain link fence. So the chain link fence alone causes some current imbalance. And then I have on each end of my antenna, my neighbor has his sheds that he keeps his snow blowers and lawnmowers in. Don't forget your gutters. So gutters on your house, and let's go even further than that. I used to have aluminum siding. Yeah. All of that mm -hmm. lad leads to your adds to your current imbalances. But again, do we really worry about it? I don't. I, what do we do? We put the antenna up, hope it works. Yeah, it works. Great. <laughs> you know? Okay. Hardware. Well, you can use a whole bunch of things to make antennas. I have my students use the zip cord. Maybe some of you know this is speaker cord. But I've been all over the world, and I've trained a lot of other people in the world, shall we say, on how to do this. And one thing you can buy in every stinking, rotten, third world country, maybe you can't buy food, but you can always buy zip cord. So it's one of those things you can make an antenna out of. By the way, do I leave the insulation on? You betcha. Why not? Number two, hard drawn copper. <coughs> a couple of commercial manufacturers use these. Hard drawn copper. I don't like solid copper myself. I don't use this. Copper weld. Anybody in here use copper weld? Okay. One thing I don't like about it, do, do you all know what copper weld is? <laughs> copper weld is steel. Copper covered steel. <laughs> and I found in my house, it's only lasts about five years. Because when you ding it, and you do some soldering, next thing you know, the rust comes out. You got bad connection. I quit using this. But this is what I use now, guys. I use flex weave. I love this stuff. 156 strand, okay? 156 strand pure copper. And covered with black insulation. I buy this from the RF connection in Woodbridge. Or where is he? Gatesburg. Gatesburg. DHE, RFC. This is great. 
and it makes a great antenna, plus it's black. So all my insulators are black. If you look from my front yard to my backyard, you can't see anything. You see a couple poles. And you gotta look real close to see an antenna. This is also when the tree falls through your antenna, like has happened uh, three occasions for me now. The neighbor's tree half branches come off during the ice storm, fell through, broke the antenna in half. This is very easy to splice, very easy. Take these <coughs> six strands here, seven, put the other one and just twist them together, light off your big solder iron, solder them up, put some heat shrink tubing over it and you're back on the air. So that's another reason I like this. Put the heat shrink sleeving on first. <laughs> oh please, yes. <laughs> By the way, after this has been up, this stuff here, Copper weld's been up for about three or four years. You just try to splice it. Go ahead and make my day. You just try. Very difficult. Okay. Next. Insulators. Man, you got a whole bunch here. Nice beefy ones. Plastic. Remember the old porcelain? Rolling off. Porcelains when we were a kid. Not fragile, yeah, okay. Thank you. When we were a kid, we used to use these. I remember this was a, a real big deal. I used to buy these surplus store. Nice big long ones if you're running a lot of power. And then one I don't want you guys to use. Don't use eggs. You guys know why? A lot of you use metal guy wires. And if you put a metal guy wire through here and then your antenna goes through here, you get a capacitive effect from that. Don't use these on the end. Just yeah, that's old too, school. They're too small as well, opposed to the other one? Yeah, well, they're too small, but you get a capacitive effect if you use a metal guy wire. I don't use metal, but just keep that in mind, that you do get a capacitive effect and C shortens your antenna, right? In a yeah. pinch, the plastic yes. out of a six-pack uh, beer holder works just as well. Ice cream sticks, uh, drilled dolls, uh, PVC, we've used it all when we were kids and didn't have any money, right? When I was a kid, we didn't have PVC. Oh, that's true. That's, I remember that. <laughs> now, guy rope, wire, support mass, polyester, polypropylene, Dacron. I got them all up here, guys. This is Dacron. I really like Dacron. Nice stuff. This is uh, your OD550, what the military calls parachute cord. This is nice stuff. But I love this. This is, this is a woven, IR-protected uh, uh, nylon. Really strong. And this is what I use at home. Plus, you get a little bit of stretch from it. And if you have a tree-mounted antenna like I do, you might want to get a little stretch from it. Also, if you set the antenna up a little too tight in the nice warm summer and then it goes to free, really cold like we've had this winter. Exactly. <coughs> ice. Anybody have ice on their antenna a couple, was it a couple weeks ago? We had an ice storm. And I came out, the antenna was white and it was just like this. <laughs> um, support mass. Now, I'm using a oak tree. No, actually, it's a beet. It's a maple tree. That's maple tree in the middle is my support at home. But I have my students do this. Now, guys, this is a fishing pole, for Pete's sake. This is a, a crappy pole for catching bluegill. And this goes up 18 feet. Ooh. And this is what I use. It's a carbon-based product, so there's no metal. And then we guy it with nylon, and the other two guy wires are the inverted V antenna itself, which okay. is which is right here, and uh, that's what I use. So we could, you know, we could go out in the parking lot and put this up in uh, just minutes, and then uh, putting this, putting your insulator on the end, all I do is take cable ties, cable tie it on there. Okay, yo. Do those things send a rock together? They just 
friction. They friction lock. Friction lock. Okay? Just friction. And it seems to... I've had students who have a little bit too much beef and uh, break it off. Yeah, I have about six of these in the classroom. <laughs> and they're cheap. Guys, 20 bucks. Where do you get it? Uh, Dick's. Dick's. Dick's Sporting Good. I even put here fully extended 17 feet. I broke off the top one on purpose. I, mm -hmm. I took the top one off because it's too thin to support an antenna. Mm -hmm. And by God, in the wind, it'll, it'll bend and everything. <laughs> this is nice. I also had my machinist at work make me this so it sticks into the dirt. Sticks in real nice. Okay? All right, what else we got here? Coax cable. All kinds. You guys got your choice. RG58. Anybody use that for HF? I've used it for years. It's great stuff, man. Cheap. Kind of like a bill payer for us. Make sure you get the RG58 uh, A U. Anybody know the difference? What's RG58 C? Solid, Solid center conductor. Solid center conductor. You don't want that. You don't want that because maybe you have a twin. You have your lead outside and it's blowing back and forth and back and forth. Make sure you get RG58 A. Okay, the next one, which is so popular today, you all know it as RG. Sorry, you you all know it as RG8. X, you know, and let me tell you, there's some real garbage out there in RG8X. You want good RG8X, go spend some money and buy the LMR from Times Microwave Corporation, buy LMR 240 UF. LMR stands for Land Mobile Radio, 240.24 inches, same as RG59, by the way, and the UF is Ultra Flex. If you buy just LMR 240, you'll get the one with the solid center conductor. And boy, will you be sorry you did that. So make sure you get UF Ultra Flex. So does this mean that crimp <coughs> connectors for RG59 will work on the LMR 240? Uh, not necessarily, no. No. Plus, you don't want to put a 75 ohm connector on a 50 ohm no. cable. Next, I think the one that we've all used before. RG213, you guys know it maybe as RG8, but this is RG213 here, about a buck a foot, good stuff, single shield, bare copper. Again, guys, there's a lot of junk out there, and I really recommend, there's only <coughs> two companies, two companies that you should be buying coax from. You should buy it from Times Microwave or Belden, and I don't work for either one, but don't. Don't go out and spend $4,000 on a radio and then get cheap coax. I, I, I got people doing that all the time. You know, you spend money. Boy, did I go overboard. I'm feeding my 40 meter dipole with Belden, L, Belden 9913 F7. You know what my loss is at 100 feet? Point 0.3 dB. Like it's not there. It's not there. <laughs> it's wonderful coax. This stuff, you, you, you all familiar with this? If you're not, good, we're doing good. Double shielded. That second shield, it's not just a shield, man. It's a completely encased with aluminum foil. The center conductor is seven strands. This is the best stuff you can use. Absolutely the best. That sounds an awful lot like the uh, thick, thick neck cable that I've got at home. Okay, this is also, you didn't think that Times Microwave was going to let Belden get away with making all the money, right? <laughs> so, who comes up with it is Times Microwave comes up with their own called LMR, Land Mobile Radio, 400. Same thing, but not the same. Okay? Same thing. Great stuff. What's that? Yeah, sure. For those of you who haven't seen it, 
I also feed my 2 meter J pole with it and my 440 J pole with it. I mean, my whole house is wired with the good stuff. <laughs> Go spend a buck sixty a foot. So what? You just spent four thousand on a radio. Some of us spent ten thousand on a radio, didn't we? Why would I go buy dollar, you know, fifty cent coax? It doesn't make sense. Okay. <clears throat> connectors. Uh, some of you might have attended my briefing on connectors. I uh, I put on a pretty good connector. Most of our ham radio connectors today are the good old PL259. And of course, this is 2015. Would I solder a PL259 today? Me? Never. There's only one way to do it, guys, and that's crimp it on. I got the full crimp set at home. I would never solder. Only if I have to. If I'm in the jungle or the bush or the desert, and I really got a solder connector, okay, I'll do it. But crimp, man, it's the best. This is the old solder kind. By the way, this old connector that we've been using for many years came out in 1937. A guy named Mr. Quackenbush came up with this connector. He was working for Bell Laboratories. The first coax connector, and it looked just like this. And here it is, 80 years later, we're still using this connector. It's our HF standard. Please don't use this connector beyond 200 megahertz. It starts to break down. And please wrap the heck out of it when you have it outside. Okay? Very important. So I'll pass these around if you want to see how one's supposed to look properly put on. I also give a demo on that. There's a there's the uh, crimp one. Type in. Type in. Another, probably the greatest connector ever invented, good up to 18 gigahertz. Again, would I solder if I didn't have to? This is a, they have the guts to call this a quick connect. <laughs> quick connect my butt, quick connect. That costs, this takes like 20 minutes to put this on. This crimp connector, crimp type in, I put it on in 90 seconds. 90 seconds I can do one, and it's mill spec. The end connector was invented by Mr. Paul Nile of AT&T. Paul Nile invented it in 1943 for radar, and we're still using it today. That's what the end comes from. So there's the end. And then uh, I guess the one also on the one I'm passing around, it's got a BNC on it. Some of our equipment has BNC. Now all the dipoles and stuff here, Back here. We feed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had an old piece of surplus equipment as a kid. It, it was 432 megahertz. I think it was for aircraft radar. Yeah. UHF. Yeah. And it had the PL259 connectors. Yep. What's the other name of a PL259? <laughs> UHF connector. And the bottom line, we didn't know any better. <laughs> and you guys also, I want you to remember another thing. There was no such thing as VHF in World War II. It went HF. HF ended at 30 megs, and UHF started at 30 megs. UHF was 30 to 3,000. The radar that tracked the planes, the Japanese planes attacking Pearl Harbor, the radar was on 92 megahertz. <laughs> That's a today's FM broadcast. <laughs> All right, next. How are you going to feed your dipole? You going to just feed it like this? I do that all the time. Or are you going to use a ballon? And we'll talk more about the ballon in part two. Because I took a ballon apart today, one of my ballons that uh, got wrecked by a tree. And uh, we find 47, 47 ferrites in there in a row. So we'll go over how that works. So guys, it's 725. You got any questions? I never run over. <laughs> you recognize that house, Sheila? How'd you get your call sign on it? I just... Are you learning graphics? I cut and paste. Actually, that's Lee's shack, not oh, mine. Okay. <laughs> Yo. You feed the platter line, ever? What do you think about it? It's great, but remember, then you need a balanced tuner. Need a tuner. 
Now, why don't I do that at my house? Why don't I do ladder line? That'd be great. I mean, because I'm kind of stuck on, I have, okay, I'll tell you what I have at my house. I have a 40 meter dipole trapped for 20. That's what I have. Because I only operate two bands. I only operate 40 and 20. Would I love to have just two random lengths, maybe 80 feet and 80 feet, feed it with ladder line? You betcha. But I don't have, ladder line is supposed to go in a straight line, and it's not supposed to touch any metal. It's supposed to avoid abrupt curves. And I'm in the second floor. I'm in my wife's, quote, sewing room that when I die, she gets it back. <laughs> so I'm in there. So I'd have to go up here through the attic, out over here, over here, and then up into the tree. That's what I'd have to do. So I don't do it. But uh, I'm having fun on, you know, I hammed overseas. I had Yagis overseas, and I hammed in 12 countries. Mm -hmm. So here I use <coughs> ham radio mostly for you know, talking to my retired friends up and down the East Coast and whatever, and then 20 meters for chasing DX, and a trap dipole works just fine. It's a real good antenna. Uh, another old wives' tale, guys. How many times do I have people telling me, I'd never use a trap. i never use, they're lossy. You know what each trap uses, guys? If you, if you build the trap right, I calculated about 0.35 dB loss in each trap. You know, is that worth losing sleep over? That's hardly worth losing sleep over. You missed the best part, Rob. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, anything else? Please. We'll go over. Uh... <laughs>